I'm Greg Wheatley, and my guest today on Inside Wheaton is Dr. John Trotter. Dr. Trotter is Assistant Professor of Choral Music at Wheaton College in the Conservatory and acts there as uh, Director of the Concert Choir. He and I have threatened to do this for a long time, and John, it's finally here. We're uh, we're across the table from each other. So that's welcome. what they say about threats. So welcome, that's right. Eventually they happen, and I'm glad this one has. It's good you to do. have you here. It's good to be here. And welcome to Wheaton. You've been here a relatively short amount of time. Is it two years now or so? Yeah, two and a bit, especially for a place like Wheaton. That's a short amount of time. <laughs> that's, that's correct, yeah. There are yeah. a lot of people here with long tenures. Let me start by, um, you have a very interesting route here, mm. but I want everybody to, to know about it a little bit. It isn't so much an academic route. It's more of a professional uh, and performing choral route, isn't That's true. it? true, yeah. yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, I guess my high school yearbook um, declares that I will be a lawyer by the time that I'm really? as old as I am now. <laughs> uh, but you have to study something else first, and my first love was music, so I thought I would study music during my one and only chance to do it full-time, which I did in my undergrad. Hmm. Um, after doing that, which I greatly enjoyed, I began to doubt that I could stop doing it for long enough to get myself <laughs> To be a lawyer, degree. yeah. yeah. So I became a professional musician, and I did that for seven years. I was a conductor and a pianist and a composer and an arranger, and I really enjoyed it. Mm. Um, and over time, the conducting thing started to increase in sort of scope, and I started thinking that I should really study with somebody. So I would take these trips um, to go different places, and after researching grad schools for all of those seven years, I ended up at the University of Michigan when I was almost 30 years old, mm-hmm. and I worked with Jerry Blackstone, Wheaton grad. Well, I didn't know that at the time. You didn't know that, yeah. Uh, I just knew that he was um, the best at what he did. Mm. And I was kind of attracted to the fact that he was still married to his first wife, (laughs) because I was married uh, at that time, and I thought, you know, it might be nice to have some influence from someone Mm -hmm. who who understands that I want to still be married when I leave here. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Uh It's a a pretty self-centered and intense thing, doing grad school in music. Um, So we went out to the University of Michigan, my wife and I, drove across in our 1980 Volvo, (laughs) which broke down three different times on the way. And uh, I was there for two years. And then through a convoluted series of events, I stayed and did a doctorate there. Um, And then we moved back to Canada, to Vancouver, which was our favorite city. And this dream job was created for me uh, in what by that time felt like my hometown. So the professional choir in Vancouver, which is called the Vancouver Chamber Choir, Mm -hmm. is Canada's most active group. And a year before I graduated, the director sat down with me and asked me if I'd like to come and guest conduct a concert and asked me for permission to apply for funding to create a new full-time position for wow. an associate conductor wow. uh, and asked if I would be interested in that. So I said, sure, <laughs> said, that would be okay. Let me think about yeah, that a while. Yeah, right? so I yeah. thought about it for five or ten seconds. <laughs> and uh, so that happened, and it was it was amazing. We traveled. That's John Washburn, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He's been doing that for more than 40 years now. Mm. And he, ironically, is from the Midwest. Mm. He, uh, his first big city experience was in Chicago. He left the country to spread his wings and you know, take advantage of the opportunities that he found elsewhere. And so it was just a huge honor to work with him and these singers who live for the music that mm. I, I just find so moving. Mm-hmm. And we traveled across Canada, and we went to Asia, and we, they have a very, very dense home season. Um, so it was fantastic, and my wife was working on her uh, doctorate at the University of British Columbia around this time. And then uh, she finished her work there, and she, we had to move elsewhere for an internship for a year. And it turned out that was going to be in Edmonton. So for one very strange year, we lived in Edmonton while I nominally worked full-time in Vancouver. Ah, I was back there every month wow. covering concerts and conducting and doing some rehearsals, mm-hmm. but our home was in Edmonton. And after that year, uh, we were for the first time ever geographically uh, free because one of us had always been in school when mm-hmm. I was working in Vancouver she was in uh, University doing her master's program and we'd never actually not been in residence at mm-hmm. some you know <laughs> right uh, university so um, Near the end of that year. I was in Chicago in the Chicago Hilton on the second floor um, Chatting with Jerry Blackstone who was my old supervisor and about what I had been doing and when most people had asked me that question at this conference I was careful to tell them yeah, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this. I was careful to tell them all the highlights of you know, the previous <laughs> season and all the important pieces I conducted sure, the places yeah, we've been yeah. and done. But he knows me pretty well. And I said to him, you know, the thing that I'm most excited about this season is I've been able to speak at a number of churches about the music that I'm doing with the chamber choir. A lot of the music we did at the chamber choir is sacred music. And the reason for that is simply that there's so much good sacred music. You can't be a professional group and not right, sing it. Right. And, uh, 
and so for the first time ever, I got to speak to people in churches about this music, which is usually on biblical or liturgical texts. No great stretch to do a sermon on that stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes I'd bring some singers with me and we'd sing, and sometimes I'd just use recording, for example, and I'd have the people from the congregation sing some of it with me. And then I'd invite them to come to the concert, and many of them would. And so my employer thought that was fantastic because folks would come, and the churches thought it was great. And it was the kind of win-win situation that I wouldn't have had the courage to actually propose as workable, but that was. Mm. And uh, so that's sometimes a sign, you know. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I was talking to him about this, and he sort of looked thoughtful, and he got sort of quiet. And when I was done, he said, you know, John, I think you should keep an eye out for Wheaton College. And I said to him, Jerry, what is Wheaton College? <laughs> and he looked at me with some surprise. Wrong and, thing to say to Jerry Blackstone. Yeah, that's right. And he, so he said he had gone to school here, and mm. he said it was a liberal arts college, and they had a conservatory of music, um, which in itself is a little unusual, and, mm-hmm. you know, that it was a, a Christian college through and through, and I thought, well, that's an interesting concept. Um, so I, you know, got home from that trip, and I looked up Wheaton College, and there was no job at Wheaton College, so... I didn't think any more about it. Um, and so I, you know, explored all kinds of other options. And sometime later that fall, there was a posting for a position here. And I felt, on one hand, really nervous because I've always been sort of careful to keep my Christian worship and community separate from my wage earning self. Mm-hmm. Um, and that way, when I show up at church, it's a sanctuary away from all the yeah. pressures right. of the work I do. I've right. never been a paid church musician. I'm often a volunteer church musician, mm-hmm. but I've never had responsibility right. uh, there. And it's it's a wonderful, glorious thing mm-hmm. to be in that position, and mm-hmm. I've been you know grateful for that. But um, although Wheaton College isn't a church, it is a community, and it is Christian, and church had always been my Christian community, and I was really nervous about the prospect of mm-hmm. you know my worlds colliding and what would happen if I had a problem at work, did that mean that I would have a spiritual yeah. problem That's too? Yeah, an interesting question, right. Uh, so um, I, we started this conversation, and I was in conversation with other organizations and universities and professional groups as well. And I remember writing on one of my essays, because they have you write essays at Wheaton College, four large essays, <laughs> uh, which I wrote over Christmas break. I remember saying that I was applying for lots of other jobs elsewhere, but I really did have a peaceful feeling about this one because I felt like with all the people on the Wheaton side praying about their search, that they were likely to you know, conduct their search well and to offer the job to the right person. And therefore, um, whoever got the job was probably the right person. Mm-hmm. And I would just really, I felt good about that. You know, I felt in a way safe. Um, until they called me and asked me to come to <laughs> campus, and then I realized it might be me. Um, and so I was, I was so intent that I didn't want sort of to get the job in error, that mm-hmm. I, was, I, I was very honest with the people here about my um, misgivings, you know, and my shortcomings mm-hmm. and my fears. <laughs> um, I remember uh, Dr. Wilder, the dean, and uh, Stan Jones, the provost, you know, they must have been surprised by some of the questions I asked and some <laughs> of the answers that I gave. Um, but it just seemed to me that there was so much promise here that I really wanted them to consider carefully, right. you know, right. and I'm not American, I'm, I'm Canadian. So there's a bunch of cultural differences and mm-hmm. those are way more apparent to Canadians than they are to Americans. Ah, so I had to kind of explain, you know, yeah. what, what that was all like and what it was all about and why it made me hesitant to cross the border and, you know, <laughs> live as an expat and all that kind right. of thing. Well, you're here now and, uh, there's no going back. Um, <laughs> I want to ask you, John, about, because this comes out, anybody that knows you or who watches you uh, on stage or perform, or, or as you've mentioned, you like to talk about the music, which, which I think is fascinating. I want to ask you about your passion for choral music, um, because presumably uh, you're passionate about music in general, mm-hmm. but obviously I think for most choral musicians, uh, we know that, that it takes on a certain, there's something about this choral art yeah. that's different than, say, symphonic works mm-hmm. and uh, as much as we love those two Ta- talk about that talk about the, the the uniqueness of the choral art so it snuck up on me you know it's not like i i chose it and then grew into it i i ended up singing in a really good choir in undergrad pretty much by mistake i mean my voice changed <laughs> a second time after high school i ended <laughs> up as a low bass that made me valuable though i was <laughs> mediocre as a singer and so i got into this group that was too good for me and Here's an example. So I had been playing fugues, the Bach, the well-tempered clavier, for, for years prior to this. 
and working on the individual voices of the fugue and trying to play, you know, duets and bring them out and learn the different voices. But the first time in rehearsal that I actually sang a fugue, it was a Brahms fugue, um, I, that was when I understood what a voice is, hmm. what it is to get all behind one line with your body and commit totally to it, to shaping that line. Hmm. And then as, you're, as you learn that line well enough and your awareness expands, being where you're surrounded by people who are doing that too with their right. whole selves mm -hmm. and those those like fully meant commitments are weaving together mm -hmm. to make this thing. Yeah. I couldn't look at music the same way after that. Yeah. Um, and then I started cluing into the whole language thing. I had wanted to do a double major in English literature and music, which wasn't available at my college. So I took a lot of literature courses. Uh, and what I liked about literature wasn't literary theory. It was deep reading, mm -hmm. slow reading. Mm -hmm. You know, I love mm -hmm. the music of the words. Yeah. And the language is this like little miracle we take for granted all the time. Yeah. It, it, isn't, it isn't given to us wholesale. We, we grow it up mm -hmm. out of our experience. Mm -hmm. And it's embodied. So the experience we have of living and the experience we have of speaking the words that represent that to one another, those are deeply entwined. So... In, with singers, with singing, we get to do this in a really exaggerated way. We, we call it lyric diction. We take the word and we love it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and we extend it and we wrap them on top of one another. And then we take music and we, we wrap it up with all of that. So it seemed that everything that I loved was kind of in one place. Yeah. When you have a poet who is very, very gifted and a composer who is very, very gifted um, and musicians and lovers of language getting together... That that's like an intoxicatingly rich. The perfect storm, isn't possibility. it? Possibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty amazing. I, I want to play a little bit of. Uh, we may have time to play the whole thing, but this is a piece that you and the concert choir here performed not too long ago. October. Uh, just this past, uh, yeah, uh, October of uh, fourteen. It's the Mozart Ave Verum Corpus. I, I have to tell you personally, this is a desert island piece for me. I mean, I would take this. Mm -hmm. uh, this would be on my bucket list. Yeah. Talk about this piece, and then we'll we'll listen to you and the choir. So sometimes you can tell who the masters are by what they can do with simplicity. You know, anyone can write a complex piece of music, but writing something that is simple and distilled and powerful and has a sense of inevitability to it and also freshness, mm -hmm. um, you have to really know what music is in order to do that. And Mozart does. And as we worked on it together, the choir and I, choir and, I and the string players who joined us, um, you know, his love for the individual words, but also his clear recognition of, of the way they c combine and the way the, not just the words and the phrases, but the ideas behind them are, are reflected is immensely deep and powerful. Not in a way that rubs your face in it, but it just invites you in. And this piece is, is beloved by many. Um, it's beloved by people who don't understand a word of it, which shows you how powerful the music is on its own. And it's beloved by many people of deep faith who, who see something in it that's, that calls to them. Let's listen to it. This is the uh, Mozart Ave Verum Corpus, the Wheaton College Concert Choir, directed by John Trotter.
The Mozart Ave Verum Corpus, sung by the uh, Wheaton College Concert Choir, directed by our guest today, Dr. John Trotter. Absolutely beautiful piece and beautifully performed. They they did it well. They loved it. I'll tell you, we didn't have much rehearsal on that piece. Hmm. Um, because it's simple, you can over-rehearse it to your detriment. Uh, if you if you know the music and learn to be sensitive to it, then you can invite the students into something very organic and spontaneous, yeah. which may not be in every way comfortable for them. It calls you know a lot out of them yeah. in the moment, and that's what that do performance you, do was. Do you find, and maybe, John, this would be a good example to think about when you were rehearsing that piece, um, those moments where singers, I'm just going to say, get it, mm. where maybe you've rehearsed hard and hard, and it's a more difficult piece than yeah. that, perhaps, mm -hmm. and suddenly there's this moment of, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, so that happens, you hope, with every piece, but it happens later in the process with the tough pieces, mm -hmm. right? Um, usually the conductor believes before the singers believe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then, yeah. but, but because you're facing each other as a conductor, you see the lights come on. Mm -hmm. you, know, you see the, the eyebrows, mm -hmm. the faces open up, the, just the, the sense of realization or almost discovery. You know? mm -hmm. um, and then when, when it happens to several people at a time when they share it together, that's when you know you're onto something. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a sense in which, um, I, I think for anybody, but especially then when you talk about believers, mm. joining in that kind of corporate singing, mm. um, there's a great power in that, isn't there? Yeah, and, and you don't have to take my word for it, right? The Bible's very yeah. clear that this is what we're meant for. Yeah. Um, and not, not as a pastime, not as an entertainment, but as an exercise of spiritual formation. Mm. It's listed there with, you know, breaking bread together right. and, and reading the words of God and worshiping together. Um, it's it's all of a piece, and you know scientists in many many areas are discovering that singing with other people is really good for you, mm -hmm. and I hope that that we in the church aren't sitting around waiting for them to discover more reasons for it. Uh, we already have, in a sense, right. you know the commands, and many of us the willingness. Right. Uh, we we should just do it. Mm -hmm. John, good to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting Dr. me. Dr. John Trotter is assistant professor of choral music, director of the Wheaton College Concert Choir. And uh, if you enjoyed what you just heard and uh, saw, if you're watching the video of the Ave Verum, uh, let me encourage you to go back to the website. There's much, much more there from all of the performing groups here at Wheaton College. Go to wheaton.edu and search uh, for the conservatory. That's a good place to start. For Inside Wheaton, I'm Greg Wheatley.